This is my Dutch book Retro Radio. It's published by Elector International Media in the Netherlands. It's uh, written in Dutch, so perhaps not uh, available or understandable for people that um, don't uh, know this language. But uh, in this video I want to give some um, insights in this book and especially uh, about uh, VFOs, variable frequency oscillators. So that's why this video is called Playing with Radio Oscillators Part 1. And um, I have uh, published in this book all uh, complete uh, classic radio circuits from superheterodyne radios and they are made like they were made in the past in the 50s or the 40s or the 30s perhaps and the classical superheterodyne radio consists of a high F high frequency stage a mixer uh, an intermediate frequency stage a detector for AM and an audio stage and here is the VFO the variable frequency oscillator and it has to deliver uh, a frequency in the uh, appreciable uh, shortwave band for many radios simple shortwave radio this is 2 megahertz up to 10 megahertz and that's also what this video is about this VFO circuit is about it works very properly uh, between these two frequency between, between these two frequencies you can also adapt it to a wider frequency band let's say 50 kilohertz up to 17 megahertz but uh, that means that you have to do adaptations you need an oscilloscope etc so the whole, the whole circuit is suitable for um, a wider frequency band but it will take more effort and in this video I want to show how to calculate such a simple circuit one transistor this is the frequency dependent um, uh, tank circuit here C1 and L L stands for inductance and uh, to make this video a little bit more enjoyable I show an oscillator circuit here and also the waveform by the way this uh, oscillator here is not the circuit that I show here but um, um, perhaps uh, there are some similarities at first uh, a few questions when you see this in a, a circuit on the internet or so um, and all these values here R3, R4, uh, C1 and the inductance value you always have to ask uh, what values uh, do I have to use capacitor values or inductance values or resistance values uh, are usable in such a circuit and in this video I want to demonstrate a few rules of sub. At first um, the question is what value must this resistor be or this resistor be? Well, when the transistor is in conduction, let's assume the transistor is in conduction, so it's in a saturated position. That's not the case here, but uh, as a rule of thumb we can uh, take this as a starting point R3 and R4 are connected here in the collector wire so there is a maximum current that can flow through the transistor this maximum current is limited to the um, uh, transistor itself and especially how much watts this transistor can handle 
in these circuits, these small oscillators, we, also, we always use these small transistors. They can handle approximately 100 milliwatt or so. So you can use Ohm's law to calculate these two values. And in that case you also have to take in account that this is an emitter follower circuit, in fact, and that the transistor has to um, amplify. And the amplification in such a transistor circuit is that set by the ratio between this transistor and this transistor. So when this is 1000 ohms and this is 100 ohms, generally spoken, we can say that the circuit amplifies 100 times. This capacitor is also very important in that case. This capacitor sets the frequency band in which the whole circuit amplifies at its maximum. So R3 and R4 use the maximum collector current, refer to the data sheet and take half the half of that collector current as a safe value, use Ohm's law and for instance when R3 and R4 are together 1220 ohms, divide it in um, these two values, 1k for this resistor and here 220 ohms. The maximum current that flows is approximately uh, 10 milliampere and um, that means also that we can say when we assume the whole circuit works in saturation, that's not the case, but okay, that the transistor handles approximately 120 milliwatts. And these small transistors can handle 300 milliwatts, so it's a very safe value to operate the transistor on. And then there is the next there are the next two important resistors, R2 and R1. Um, they are related to the base current from the transistor and the beta, the current amplification. So um, also here we can use Ohm's law, but um, that's not for very necessary. We, have, we only have to send in the base of the transistor a very, very tiny current and the transistor must be set to its working point. And that's more important um, than the current that has to be sent in the base. We set the working point from the oscillation with this resistor. So when you take 1k here and 25k here, it's always right uh, for the circuits that operate on 12 volts. The next important uh, cap um, components are C3 and C4. They form a so-called capacitive voltage divider. And the most important thing from this capacitance, capacitive voltage divider is that C4 sets the frequency band where it works and C4 uh, and C3 has an effect on the back coupling. So the amount of oscillation. You have to find this, this out experimentally. And good values are here C3 and C4, 50 picofarad up to 3 nanofarad, 3000 picofarad for C4 and C3. And they also depend very substantially on the frequency where the whole circuit has to operate. So when it's short wave, let's say 3 megahertz, this uh, coil is tuned to 3 megahertz, um, you have to adapt C3 and C4. And uh, when you have chosen some values, watch the oscilloscope to see whether the sine wave is undistorted. So this whole video is a little bit theoretical, but for all people interested in making a simple radio, perhaps it's interesting. Um, 
this coil and this capacitor form a tank circuit and they are tuned to the whole central frequency on which the oscillator works. So that's given by these um, numbers, square root uh, 25330 divided by these values and the um, inductance value is in microhenry and the capacitance is in picofarad. So this uh, formula is very important and this um, coil and capacitor set the whole frequency on which the oscillator work and these all the other components are only supportive to the frequency where it works. So the, all these capacitance and inductance value have to have a relation to the frequency where this coil is tuned to. And especially these two are important. This capacitor uh, leads the signal into the base and this capacitor takes out the signal from the collector, the amplified signal. Um, they can be a little bit from the same value. It depends of course, because here there is also a certain amount of amplification and it could be that this capacitor has to, be, has to have a lower value compared to this capacitor, because the signal is amplified here. We find here for instance 2 volts or 3 volts uh, radio signal from such a value. So um, that's why I say here C2 and C5 have to be something between 10 picofarad and 500 picofarad. In my shortwave radios I use for instance 330 picofarad here or 100 and here perhaps 270 picofarad to couple the signal into the base to get it amplified and to get the whole oscillator starting. So we can say that the, these um, capacitor values depend on the band pass. The signal transport into the base and the signal transport out of the oscillator. When you take a high value, the, the whole signal uh, that's put out could be stronger. It could be necessary that it's stronger, but it also uh, could be that you don't need a very strong signal here. So in that case you have to lower the value from that capacitor. And then after all the problems from us, these simple oscillator circuits, the constant amplitude on the frequency band is very important, the distortion from the sine wave and the output level, and especially when this uh, simple transistor oscillator is loaded, is damped by a circuit here, let's say there is some parallel resistance here or parallel capacitance, it could be that the oscillator is damped and that has an influence on the frequency. So the signal level goes down and perhaps even the frequency can change when this transistor is too heavily damped at its output. So in many circuits, in radio circuits, you will find a buffer stage here. A buffer uh, that separates the oscillator um, and makes that there is no influence at the output from the buffer stage on the frequency. This is a good oscillator because it has its uh, coil and capacitor on ground. That means that the whole circuit doesn't suffer from hand effect. When you uh, move your hand to a coil, for instance here, this coil, your body acts as an unknown capacitance and an unknown inductance and the frequency changes. Now I move my hand to this coil and you can see on the oscilloscope that the frequency changes a little bit. The waveform gets longer, the frequency goes down. 
So when you have, when you want to make simple radio circuits, that's something to take in account. The constant amplitude depends a lot on the quality factor from the coil, the Q from the coil. Um, when the Q from the coil on such an oscillator is too high, you will find um, an important, uh, an important um, effect on the amplitude. So, in fact, the coil for such an oscillator doesn't have to have, doesn't, um, must not have a too high quality factor. In that case, um, you get a lot of amplitude changes when you tune the oscillator between the frequency band. The distortion from the sine wave depends very much on the chosen components. So you have to find it out experimentally very carefully to get uh, as less distortion as possible. And the output level influences. I have already discussed that uh, when I talked about the buffer stage. So this is a simple oscillator, one transistor oscillator that can operate between 2 MHz and 10 MHz. These are indications for the capacitance values that you can use. The BC547B works up to approximately 9 MHz. In fact, it's a frequency that, uh, sorry, it's a transistor that's designed for a lower frequency band. But it has very, very good properties for these, for such a simple shortwave oscillator. And in the next video I hope to tell more about another oscillator circuit and do some experiments to show all the effects and the flaws and the properties from such a simple circuit.